For some reason, my master sound went out. Okay, let's start this over again. <laughs> I wasn't looking at the messages over there. Okay, so anyway, meet and greet. Uh, May 16th and 17th in 2020. So get your plans ready for then. Red Caboose Inn has a lot of places there. There's about 30 cabooses where you could stay. They have a couple of extra rolling stock there. Okay, can you hear now? Still no sound. Okay. I'm not. Okay. Better. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Now we got sound. All right. Now, if you haven't heard, let me say this for the third time. Um, meet and greet 2020, May 16th and 17th in Strasburg, Pennsylvania. Get your... Okay, sound okay now. Get your reservations out there and get them going. Red Caboose Inn has about 30 cabooses plus a couple extra pieces of rolling stock where you could spend the night. They have them uh, set up as hotel rooms. And from what I understand, they also have some farmhouses. If you have a lot of people, if you want a lot of people to get together, uh, you could uh, also rent a farmhouse. I don't know what the prices are, but from what I've seen, just a double Double bed was like $105, and I think uh, two double beds was $150. So, I mean, it's 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 not like a uh, going to a Holiday Inn Express, but uh, it's a little on the high side for uh, sleeping in a caboose. But uh, uh, it's the experience that counts. But Strasburg, if you're going to go, it takes two days, maybe even three days there. Um, what is it? You have the railroad and it has a lot of buildings in there you could also take tours of the uh, the back shop um, across the street is the Pennsylvania Railroad Museum down uh, the road oh, about a block is a choo-choo barn I just did a video on that one when we were there this past year uh, and the caboose motel is like at the end of the block it's like probably about a quarter mile away and then right behind the caboose hotel is the toy train museum i did a video on that uh last year when we was there and there's there's a lot to see and there's a lot to see in lancaster if you like uh old stuff um check out the barns and everything you know there's a lot of amish people out there that sell stuff from their barn and from their houses where you could find a lot of old stuff there you might find some old railroad stuff there too uh, I did some time ago so today's topic is computer power supplies and their connectors now some time ago I did a video on the uh, computer power supply I think it was about two years ago and if you look up in the chat I put a link to that video uh, don't watch it now but you could watch it uh, later on but that's what we're gonna start out with so let's get started with that Okay, here we are at the workbench, and that is this right here. I got some, let me get these notes out of the way so you can see better. But I have a power supply right here. Let me get my soda out of here so I don't knock it over. This came out of my XP computer. This was a Dell. It is... Uh, this is bigger than the actually the same physical size, but it is how many watts is this one here? Uh, da, 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 120 volt, 8 amp. Okay. Where's the wattage on there? 
And my eyes are getting bad. But anyway, that's beside the point. But here it is uh, from an old uh, computer. I bought this a uh, long time ago. Uh, it was loaded with uh, Windows XP, so you can imagine how long it is. This is a 20-pin connector right here. Now, if you remember, if you watched the video, this is the connector that I used, this terminal board right here, where I got all these wires on connected right here. I have that old power supply underneath this uh, table right here. And what we're going to talk about today is if you don't like to take all this stuff apart here and do what I did on here, there are breakout boards for it. Now, some time ago, after I did that video on here, somebody was telling me about the breakout boards, and I said, you know, and I looked, I looked at them, but I never uh, really purchased them until about a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I got two of them right here, and I, that's what I wanted to show you. What I, I was a little disappointed in in this right here because you can see that it's got the uh, these are so called uh, terminals on here. But let me get an actual one, and you can see the difference. So right there, let me get it over here so you can see the difference in these things. Now, these ones that I bought, they are pretty good. I bought a bunch of these of different colors and anything like this. But these are these are really small. And the, and the reason that you get these in there is if you have some uh, banana plugs, you could plug them in there. But these on here are too small for banana plugs. So, you know, the banana plugs should just fit in it just like that. But... Also, another thing on there, they have five amp fuses on here. The only problem with that is if you look on, on a power supply, on the different voltages, okay, the plus five volt is 22 amp max. The plus 12 volt is 18. The minus 12 is one amp. So that's where you run into a problem there. 3.3 uh, is 17 amp. That's on this one here. But most of the power supplies that I've seen on the minus 12, and this one has a minus 12 right here, they have a 5 amp fuse right here. But this is only rated at 1 amp. Now what I'm going to do is plug this thing in so you can see it. Let me get this plug over here turn it around this way and we're gonna fire this thing up now these break well I'll start with this breakout board right here this breakout board is 24 pins so if you you know some some of the older ones have 20 pins on here ATX connector other ones have uh, 24 pin so they put a 24 pin on these breakout boards. Let me see where we go here. Okay, so Oops This one is on this side here All right Let me I got the power on for that. Okay, so It has a little LED that lights up when the power comes on So If you want to power some things on your model railroad, so say like your Arduino projects or anything like that, you could tap into the five volts on here. If and if you have some Arduino that is uh, less than that, uh, some of the boards are 3.3 volts, like the, some of the Pro Minis are 3.3. You could use that on there. It, you could also have the 12 volt on here for some LED. Some LEDs have 12 volt. Minus 12 volt, you, uh, it's just backwards from uh, 
12 plus 12 volts and you know instead of uh, using using uh, this is the negative and this is the plus it just backwards so this ends up being a negative and this is the the plus on it so uh, it you know you could still use it on there let me get the meter right here and show you what we got okay so this one shows up and my my things ain't long enough <laughs> so I'm gonna have to come down in here and do this here and grab it on this side so 3.348 which is uh, pretty close it might be easier just to turn this thing over if the uh, wires will cooperate with me and we'll do it this way here okay do it this way but anyway I'm just showing you that you got the voltage on there 11.89 5.01 and this one will be 3.3 .3. and then this one right here will be backwards this is the the negative one this is the minus 12 volts so you got minus 11.97 okay that's that one right there let me turn the power off the other one here I like it a little bit better because it has the terminals on there and it uses every pin see on this one here you only have one one place to hook up for each uh, voltage on there even though you have multiple places on there where you could tap into it on this one here it uses every available space on there so it just uh, you know a direct connection to the terminals on the plug and these are, are available at Amazon and that's where I got those and I have it on my Amazon Amazon page see this one here it has an LED that lights up when you plug it in and that way you can tell you have power on your uh, power supply there then with this push button here that turns it on so let's take a look at it now if you're using the 20 pin one these these four pins on the end are not being used so these two right here are not connected and these two over here on the terminal board are not connected the only thing that I found uh, strange about this one here when I, when I when it shipped all the screw terminals were pushed in all the way so what I had to do and, and what I had to do was take a screwdriver and just undo them all the way out so I can get something on there so let me just give you a little glimpse at this I'm gonna put that right there oh, backwards negative on this side here So you got 5.011 and you can go down the line let me keep the negative there that's another common there's another five that one's 4.9 so you can see on some of them like this 5 volt one 5.011 now it's showing 5.011 okay so they're both the same on there but anyway you got more possibilities on there let me shut this off and I'm going to show you one project that I was doing on here which has nothing to do with this uh, stream but just to show you how it works I got it hooked up to the five uh, volts and I had this is the AT tiny 84 and I did this project some time ago and what I and what I did on it I just run the uh, 
sequence the LEDs across it to just to give you a demonstration of uh, how that works. And this right here can be used exactly like an Arduino. You could program it from your Arduino and it works as a smaller Arduino. It ha doesn't have as many inputs and outputs as an Arduino, but you could still use it like that if you're uh, cramped for space. And later on I'll put a link to uh, that video uh, in the uh, chat. So I would like to say hello to everybody. Okay, let me shut this off. That gives you an idea of what's available. They, they make a lot more breakout boards for the power supplies, but these are the two that I picked up here and I can't get that one out. There we go. This one here I like a lot better, mainly because of this. Um, I don't like these right here because they're too small. I didn't, you know, I didn't notice that when I bought it or before I bought it, you know, you can't tell on the picture. But uh, if you're going to get one of these, I would go ahead and get this right here. Because uh, for those of you that don't like to uh, crimp, because on this thing over here, let me show it to you again. On this one I had that I took everything off of here, took all the plugs off. I had to crimp everything together with, you know, with little terminals like this. These are smaller ones here. These are the blue ones. I had to do it with yellow, which will take a uh, larger wire size and more wires than the uh, blue ones. But uh, you also have all of these extra connectors here that you used for your DVD player and whatever else. Uh, you could just cut these off and uh, uh, put wire nuts on it or you know put uh, shrink tubing on the end of it so, so it doesn't uh, short out on anything. Uh, I haven't seen any uh, breakout boards where you could use these also along with this right here. So that is at the workbench for today. Let me get that out of the way here. And there's a lot of different binding posts. Now I got I bought these at Amazon also, but they don't have the little hole in it. And and the one that I have on this breadboard here, and let me bring this down, and you can see if you open that up, you could put a wire in there because there's a hole in there. When I was a kid and didn't know any better, maybe about 12 years old. I used to take the, and I didn't even own wire strippers then, I had to use a, a knife and strip the wires. And it was stranded wires and I'd strip about that much off and we didn't have binding posts or anything like that. We just had the terminals on the transformer. I just take it and wrap it around there as much as I could and then tighten down with this big screwdriver that was oversized for the thing. You know, that that's when I was a kid, but I don't do that anymore. Okay, let, if you go to my uh, Amazon page, where is it at? Boom. Everything's on my Amazon, and I'll put a link to the Amazon in a little bit. If you got your cell phone out, you could click on this QR code right there, and it will take you right there. But uh, everything that I do it, on any video that I have, if if it's available on Amazon, I it's in my uh, Amazon. I have an influencer page, and I have an Arduino page on there. So uh, I'll put the link on there. 
I got to get it out of here out of the computer so I'll get it to you before the end of this stream right here okay let me look at the chat for a little bit so I could say hello to everybody uh, BNSF 1982 okay Jeff Evans Mike Dalton Hastings BNSF how you doing Anthony I already said hi to Art and James earlier before the show started let me see who else we got here we got um, I'm bad with names okay Nathan okay RDNT solo contracting Nancy Jones Spirit of Colorado thank you all for stopping by Debbie's in here all right William Sullivan new Ferris Railroad George Gilliam PDRR that's art uh, let me see who else we got here Chris Harden Robert Sacco is here <laughs> he said I can't read lips I don't know what happened there but it, my my uh, my volume something happened to my master volume on there Jeff Baxt okay and there goes Sadie putting her two cents worth in who else do we have in here all right uh, did I miss anybody Dave BNSF and scale thanks for stopping by okay that looks about it okay did I miss anybody down here okay so John Roulet thank you very much for stopping by now I wanted to do one thing here and I wanted to thank everybody from Patreon that has contributed to this channel. Chris O'Connell, Chuck Heidler, Debbie Cauley, she's sitting in the other room, Jack Barnett, Jeff Fleischer, John Dilly, John, John F. Wade, Marmy Hartzell, Mitch Cutt, Mr. S.E. Hemstock, Nick Ducellis, Patrick Bezanet, Reggie Stroud, Roy Hardwick, and Will Kling. A lot of those guys have been with me for a long time, and I want to thank you all for contributing through Patreon. Okay, I'm just reading some more up here. Gaffa Haynes, how you doing? Glad you can make it again. But let's talk, let's see this here. Where is it at? All right. If you haven't done so already, and probably most of you have already subscribed to me, but if there are any of you that out there that are lurking in the background that have not subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ding that bell. I don't have a bell here, but ding it anyway. So and answer all those questions that you have to answer right now because you have to tell them when you want to be notified and where you want to be notified otherwise just dinging that bell isn't going to do a thing because you're not going to get uh, notified all right so that's that one right there for the con everybody that contributed through PayPal there's also the chat window you could do the super chat down there also and PayPal me it costs money to do these things and I'll tell you a little bit later about uh, Xfinity I mentioned something about it last week that uh, they're uh, they're saying that I go over my allotted data and they're gonna charge me more for the data or if I pay another fifty dollars I'll get unlimited data so it helps out because check out that super chat that little dollar bill sign there all right what I wanted to what I also wanted to do I left my notes over here I moved them out of the way I'm gonna do a short 
shout out Monday evening tonight. with another shout out Monday evening and in keeping with the subject on that power supply and other electronics on your model railroad you're going to run into some issues where you're going to need to light something you're going to need to automate something and even if you don't want to do it with Arduino there are other ways to do it and this next uh, shout out I've learned a lot from this guy here, and he's also from Pittsburgh, uh, I come to find out. And that's uh, Learn Electronics, Electronic Tutorials, Projects, Reviews, and more. There, He has so much information on here. Now, a lot of this is over my head. You know, I'm not an electrical engineer or anything like that, so, you know, I... I I like electronics as a hobby, but as far as uh, being a guru in electronics, that's not me. But this guy right here, um, a lot of this stuff is probably you won't uh, have any uh, knowledge or any reason to want to see this, but there's a lot of stuff on here that you could... Uh, put towards your model railroad and that's why I'm doing a shout out on him right now because he he's got everything on here um, about electronics from the from the basic electronics all the way up to advanced stuff so check him out it's learn electronics he's also on Twitter and uh, what's that other one Instagram. Where is it at here? He's got links on both of them, Twitter and Instagram. He doesn't have a uh, web page, but uh, this is a good, good place to go if you want to learn something about electronics. Uh, I've learned a lot from this guy. Uh, a lot of the stuff that he does is over my head, you know, just go, whoosh. but um, Little bits and pieces here and there you could learn from him. So go check him out. Uh, let me see. I'll, did I put uh, that in there? Let me see. I'll have to. I, ha, I got two computers here doing this. So control C for that. And we'll come over to here. And I'll put it in the description, the uh, link there. I'm going to use do it on the other computer. I'm using Debbie's computer to monitor the uh, the chat, but here you know, I'll just put it on with here. But I don't it's not linked up with this computer here. So, there is the link to learn electronics. When this is finished, go see them. Or op open that right click it and open up another tab. And then you'll be able to see what he has to offer. Go there and subscribe to him. And uh, even if you don't, you know, watch all his videos because he's got a lot on there, um, you could learn a, at least a little bit, you know, to get you on your way. Because I don't know everything. I don't have all the answers on electronic gadgets and stuff like that. So if, you know, I can't answer anything, you can go to his channel and he'll be able to answer anything. And he's from Pittsburgh too. Did I mention that? So anyway. All right. Dave Hudson. How you doing? Okay. Now. The next subject is...
Mono railroading for beginners. Now, I think later on I'm going to uh, not put mono railroading for beginners in the Monday night theme because this thing's taking a long time. It takes a long time. Uh, the last one was uh, last live stream was an hour and 50 minutes. And uh, that's another thing I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, later on, we'll talk about that in the next episode, or not the next episode, but the next section. But anyway, on model railroading for beginners, I wanted to talk about my project that I'm working on right now. Now, I did a video on that about doing looking up the track plans and everything like that and i'm i'm still looking up the track plans but what i plan on doing is i got to get out all the kits that i have and open them up and just see what the dimensions are on them because i just bought one of those contractor uh craft papers you know 140 foot long i'm gonna just lay it out and because i make a lot of mistakes and i change my mind all the time and so I'm just going to lay it out and draw everything on there and try to figure out a track plan on there. And I'll have a lot of craft paper to work with after that. So if anybody wants any brown paper, <laughs> when I'm finished with this, I'll probably have a lot left over. So that's what I'm working on. Now, I got all my lumber and everything. And I took my saw downstairs in the living room and everything else. And every day it's been raining here. Jeez. You know, normally here in Florida, and I, I noticed somebody was asking a question about how it is on the west coast of Florida. I'll get to that in a little bit. But normally, you know, it's sunny all day and maybe around sometime in the afternoon, about 3 o'clock or so, it'll start raining and you know, 15 minutes later, you're done with it. Hey, aloha, Milton, how you doing? Thanks for stopping by. But this summer, it's been really weird. I mean, I get waking up 5 o'clock in the morning for with uh, thunder and lightning, and uh, that's not normal here. And it's been raining all the time. I don't know if it's... Be I mean, I, I don't watch too much TV, or hardly any now, but I on the weather bug is about the, as much uh, uh, weather that I get. But uh, I don't know what's causing it, but I, it's raining all the time here, so I haven't had time to, to cut the lumber. So that's something that uh, I need to do, and I'll probably do that tomorrow. And besides that, I, I didn't mention it yet, but... Uh, um, Right after the um, the last uh, stream two weeks ago, the day after that, we found out that uh, Debbie's brother passed away. So, you know, we were kind of off schedule on everything and we had to run up to Alabama for a few days. So uh, it's been a little bit hectic here. So uh, we're getting back into the, the stream of things uh, now. But anyway... Uh, what else did I want to talk about? That is about it on the model railroading. Um, I just got to get all my stuff together and start working on the stuff because uh, we haven't been doing uh, too much stuff here. Uh, Vinny, how you doing? Container Man 68. My goodness, I just talked about you a little while ago. Thank you for being contributing on Patreon. All right, Roy Hardwick, thank you. Uh, Vinny, how you doing? Who else is here? All right. Okay, but anyway, here, and I'm already 40 minutes in, and my timer just did something else. <laughs> what happened there? That is weird. I have a timer on my uh, computer over here that tells me how long I've been streaming. And it was showing 40 minutes and now it's counting up seconds on it. It's 30 seconds. So I don't know what's going on here. Okay, but anyway, 
I just looked over there and lost my train of thought. And speaking of train of thought, Okay, I just checked on this and for some reason the stream ended and I guess it started back up again. It says stream resumed, so for I'm a must be an Xfinity thing. But that's one of the ones one thing that I wanted to talk about with Xfinity. Okay, Aloha Milton. You missed it, so you can watch it on the uh the replay, but I was talking about these little breakout boards. Uh, this one there and that one there. So when this is over, you could uh, go back and watch the replay on this and you can catch up on what you missed in the beginning of there. But Xfinity, I, I mentioned it last week that uh, I got a notice that I went over my allotted data. And actually, for the for the entire month of July, if they would charge me for the extra data, they give me two extra months of uh, extra data before they start charging me when I go over one one terabyte. Yeah, I get I, get, I had a minor hiccup for some reason. Uh, it. Uh, now it's saying elapsed time, 45. Okay. This is weird. Let me look at the stream health on there. It looks okay. All right. But anyway, now it's back to the elapsed time, 45 minutes. But X, let's get back to Xfinity. I had a chat with somebody on there complaining about when when I first got this new plan that you know they told me that there was no data cap. Well, the person that I was chatting with online, he said, "Well, I'm sorry for that, but uh, they must uh, they must not know what they were talking about." I says, "You work for Xfinity, you should know what you're talking about." They promised me there's no data cap, and then finally, after about almost two hours of you know chatting back and forth, typing, uh, he said, "Well, I'm sorry about that, and if you, we have another plan." For another fifty dollars, you could get unlimited, and I said, "That's what I was supposed to get in the beginning with, but now I have to pay another fifty dollars to get the unlimited data plan for my internet because I don't have any more TV or telephone on Xfinity." So let me go back, and somebody asked a question some time ago, and. It was about Florida. I'm having all kind of hiccups today, huh? It was there. Okay. Give me a minute here to check this. Okay, now. This isn't what I was looking for, but this popped up. Jacksonville Train Show, Jeff Evans, August 24, 25th, Jacksonville Community Center, 5 Municipal Drive, Jacksonville, Arizona. I thought you were talking about Florida. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I was getting excited about that. I said August 24th and 25th. No, but what I wanted to talk about was... this right here. Let me get this out of the way. The Villages Model Train Show and Sale. Admission six dollars. 
August 17th and August 18th. Villages always has a good show. Uh, the, the last time we was there was about four years ago. I wanted to go last year, but uh, we ran into some issues and uh, I think we was out of town. Yeah, I think that's when we was up in, up in, in North uh, last year. It was around the same time and uh, we didn't get to see it. But anyway, August 17th and August 18th, the villages, it's in, it's between Tampa and Acala. It's off of Route 301. Hi, John Rowley, Cloverdale Rail. Hello. Uh, let me get back to where I wanted to look. But anyway, the villages. That's one train show, and there's one in um, in Atlanta on the same as that Jacksonville one. But from what I'm told, that's not the good one. Okay, here we go. Making a trip to Fort Myers was tried to see if I would be if it would be okay to come by and see you. Uh, of course, uh, send me an email, and then uh, uh, we, uh, I can give you my address, and uh, you can give me the details of when that night be. Uh, I welcome anybody to come over here to see what's going on. Uh, okay, I'm trying to find the other... Text here. Uh, this isn't the one, but Tom better better get those fresh hamsters out for the ATC power supply. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. This isn't it either, but the, I just came across there. Does anyone run Cotto Unitrack and DCC? I've got questions. Has anybody uh, answered William Sullivan's questions? I don't have uh, Unitrack. So I hope somebody in, in the uh, chat here was able to answer his question. Okay. All right. I'm going back on all these pages and I can't seem to find it. But somebody was asking about the weather on the West Coast. And okay. Oops. Not that. Well, okay. Whoever it was. They, they, I guess they're living on the east coast of Florida, and they wanted to know how it was over here. Okay, but anyway, oh, Arkansas, not Arizona. Okay, my mistake. I get confused with all all those uh, uh, two-letter abbreviations for the states. Okay, there we go. The best person for Cotto Unitrack and DCC is DIY and Digital Railroad. All right. Chris Harden, I will be at the Village's train show. It's really nice. Now, somebody contacted me about it. I can't remember his name, but was that you? I think it was uh, Chris said, uh, uh, say hello at the, the uh, N scale layout. Okay, Arkansas, Arkansas. I got a lot of people saying Arkansas. Okay, I got it wrong. <laughs> well, Jacksonville, Arkansas. But anyway, go to the villages. 
Okay. Not fond of the drive up to the villages, but may try to make it this month. Well, it's uh, it's an overnighter for us because uh, since it's about a four-hour drive, and uh, I think we have to we have to drop we have to stop off in Orlando and drop off Sadie at uh, Debbie's sister's house, and then uh, head on up to there, stay the night, and then hit the show. The last time we we did the same thing. I think we stayed. I think we stayed two nights at the Hampton Inn there. Uh, but uh, I th that's what we're going to have to do this time. Go up there on a Friday and then uh, um, come back on Sunday. So that'll be a nice little trip, nice little getaway, and uh, it's nice up there in the villages. If you like. Um, if you like golf carts, I think that I don't know how many golf courses they have there, but they have it advertised. I, it's been four years since we've been up there, but you know they advertise. We got fifty golf cart golf courses in this community, but you could even go. They you know they have a town square, and you know all the golf carts go in there and everything. And even in Taco Bell and McDonald's in the drive-through, people are going through there with the golf carts. So it's it's a pretty uh, nice thing to see at the villages. Okay, here we go. Now let's get back over here. Which way are we? Okay. Let's get back to up on the top here. I'm hoping to make one trip before my surgery to Spencer, North Carolina, to the Transportation Museum. <clears throat> I got to do a video on that because on our way home, we stopped there. And unfortunately, it was it was raining all the time. And unfortunately, it was the weekend before they had the big uh, fireman's convention there. And every year they have a, a fireman's convention there. And I mean, they bring out everything. Uh, not just the fire trucks, but locomotives from everywhere. So, uh, but when we went there, it was raining, and um, it's a really nice place. And I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to get on there and do the uh, do a video on that because I got all the footage for it, but I just haven't got around to doing that. And little by little, I'm putting out the the the. Um, videos that I did that I took while I was on vacation. Okay, here we go. Where do you buy your HO trains? Apex Hydra. I buy mine at train shows and I buy mine at Metro Trains and Hobbies and every once in a while when I'm traveling I'll buy it at the hobby shop where I stop. Uh, I always uh, like to stop at hobby shops wherever I go. I uh, look them up, I Google it, and see if I can find a hobby shop in the area where I'm at. So a lot of the places, a hobby, either a hobby shop here in Fort Myers and train shows. And every once in a while, but not too often, I'll go online and get them online. If anybody else... Okay. If anybody else has an answer on that, uh, give him, uh, let him know. It's about 50,000 golf carts. Yeah, <laughs> I know there's a lot of golf carts there, but there's a lot of golf courses. There. They even got tunnels underneath the road, too, for the golf carts. <laughs> I got a kick out of that the last time we was up there. We, in fact, we we ended up when we was on the way to Alabama. We ended up going past the villages. We had to take 301 because I think there was like three accidents on 75. And a Google lady said there was like about an hour and 52 minute delay. And so I rerouted it going up that way, and she kept on wanting to put us back on I-75. So I just had to shut the thing off and just go up past a caller to get back on I-75. But we was up, we was up there uh, last week, a couple of weeks ago. We went past there. No, last a week ago. Okay. Okay, there is a great train store there across the street, Little Choo Choo. Yeah, when we was there, um, uh, I didn't get to see it. Uh, 
what's his name? Reggie Stroud, I stopped at his place, uh, his uh, club, right before we went to Spencer, and he said, told me about the, the train store. But when, I mean, it was raining so hard after we got out of there, uh, we stopped at that little Circle K there across the street, and the the uh, train store was just, I guess, about a block away, and but we didn't get to stop up in there. Flatlined town, there was a, okay... All right, I got most of my HO equipment at Trainland and Train World in New Jersey. That's a good place. I see them uh, online all the time. Okay, so what else I wanted to talk to, about? I kept on seeing these things in the ads on Facebook, and you know, I'd, I'd be getting emails, and I talked about it last week about my hard drive. And I finally picked up one of these things. It's an all-in-one HDD docking. And I got some old computers that go back to 1998. I got, I have a computer sitting in there with two hard drives in it that, that I used for work a long, long time ago. It was originally, uh, had Windows 98 in there and I upgraded it to uh, Windows 2000 Professional. And I was using it at work. But this little thing right here, I haven't tried it out yet. But uh, it comes with a power cord, a uh, USB cable, and what else? USB cable. Okay, power cord. And you get a nice little 12 volt, 3 amp power supply. So if you ever need 12 volt, 3 amp on your layout, here you go. But. I got a lot of stuff and that I need to take off of those old hard drives so I could put them on these new hard drives that I have. Oops. This is the one that I used on my on uh, the laptop when we was on vacation. These are all videos of uh the vacation and other stuff where I backed up my stuff on the on the hard drive but anyway I got probably about six hard drives that I need to get the data off of I got old pictures on there and when I was up in Pittsburgh talking to uh, DJ he said somebody was uh, wanted to get the track plans of the place where I used to work and he showed me it in a magazine Monongahela Connecting Railroad but uh, years ago when the in, when the internet was still young and before they put everything behind a paywall you was able to get I was able to get the track plans of the Monongahela connecting railroad everything along the Monongahela river all the track work from you know at the point well there's nothing way down there but as far down as the tracks go all the way up through Hazelwood? Is that Hazelwood? I don't know. I can't remember the name of the town there. But anyway, I had all the track plans on there. And now you can't get it unless you buy it from somebody. So everything is behind a paywall now. But years ago, you can get things online. You can just look it up. You can just, you know, look it up and get it and download it. And, and so I got to find those things and, uh, and send them off. Okay. All right. I order online, get packages in about two to three days. Robert Davies. How you doing? Glad you made it again. Rough weather, ideal to stay indoors to play trains. Best wishes to all persons involved in today's chat. How you doing? Glad you made it back here. Good to see you again. And, uh... Yeah, that's a good time to play with the trains. Uh, I'm going to have to start doing it because it's been raining here a lot. All right. All right, Mark finally made it. How you doing, Mark? We was talking about you. No, not, not really. Uh, 
Just kidding. Chris Ward, I understand Chris Ward is on his way down to Orlando. He didn't say when, and I didn't ask him, but I told him to ask you about uh, the beaches because he, uh, <laughs> I guess he was a little bit disappointed in the, the uh, uh, hobby shops in Orlando because there's only one, one that I know of that was the uh, colonial photo and hobby, and most of it is just... Uh, photo stuff and just a little bit of uh, train stuff anymore. I'll get in touch with DJ Train. I got a book on that area including the Mon Connecting Railroad. Good thing. He, he showed me a magazine. I think it was Trains Magazine and they had the track plan in it and I think I showed it in one of the videos that I did uh, a couple of months ago. But it's I mean it's real small. But uh, the track plans that I have, it shows everything. Um, and I was showing them, since, I, since I, I worked there when I was in the 70s, I was showing them where all the buildings were that, you know, they didn't show in the article they had in the magazine. All right, you're growing a beard now. Okay, good deal. You got to put a picture of it. I got I got to watch you on your watch you on your channel with your beard. Internet is still young, just old timers like us getting on in life. Yeah, it is still young compared to everything else, but back in the day, you know, back in the day when, you know, just in the beginning of it, when you were able to go on there and get stuff on there without having to pay an arm and a leg for it. That's that's what I'm talking about. So now, every, you know, everything's behind a paywall and you have to pay for everything. So uh, that that's frustrating now. I'm formed the area, the Mon Railroad area, dating back to 1880. Okay, 1880, 1980. Okay, I worked. I worked at uh, Monongahela Connecting. I I started there. I think it was 1970. Uh, my girlfriend's dad and two uncles worked there, and so I was able to get in there in the electric department. Her, her one uncle worked in the car. He was the, the boss in the car shop. And the other uncle was the boss at uh, maintenance away. And so, and her dad worked. He uh, re-bricked the, uh, the ladles. So I got in there real quick and then got laid off real quick. I think about 90 days in, I got laid off. So, <laughs> but went in the Air Force and then came back. And finally, I think the last time I got laid off was in 1981. That's when the steel mills just went, pfft, uh, you know, every, everything fell from the steel mills. You know, all the steel mills in the Pittsburgh area closed. So I ended up getting a, uh, going and uh, changing uh, what I did. Went from electrician on a railroad to uh, manager in a laundry, a commercial laundry. So... That's the story of Pittsburgh. Everything changed there. But anyway, okay, we're getting a little bit off subject here. I, I told you about this thing here. Yeah, I got I, I to gotta, I, I gotta get all the stuff that I was collecting in the good old days. Now, another thing that I found, and you might be interested if you're doing Arduino, I didn't even know that anybody had books out on Arduino model railroad signals. Uh, uh, this guy, I guess these two brothers, Paul Bryant and David Bryant, uh, they got three books out. I got this one here. I, find, I saw this on Amazon, so I thought I'd get it. It doesn't give you too much information. I think I give more information in one of my videos, but what do they charge for this? And I don't know, it was like 19 bucks. But anyway, uh, I just, uh, you know, flipped through it real quick. But uh, watch YouTube videos. 
that's, that's all I got to say. <laughs> hey, Sparky, how you doing? Glad you can make it. All right, you're at the airport. Let me put this thing up here. Hi from the airport. Good day, model railroaders. I made an announcement and I'll make another announcement now since Sparky is here about May 16th and 17th of 2020 in Strasburg, Pennsylvania. That is the meet and greet. And there's a lot of things to do there. It's two days and you could probably even spend a third day there if you like to go uh, out and see what the Amish do. But uh, there's a lot of, you know, there's Toy Train Museum, the Caboose Motel, which I think they got about 30 cabooses and some farmhouses if you have, you know, a lot of people. And uh, Choo Choo Barn, Pennsylvania Railroad Museum, Toy Train Museum, I said that, and Strasburg Railroad, all in within about, I'd say a half a mile from each other. So that's going to be an interesting thing there on May 16th and 17th. So get your reservations in early so you can get to stay at a caboose. Um, I went on in Expedia on my cell phone to get on there and it showed everything on there for the Red Caboose Motel. But then when I, then I had to sign in, once I signed in, there was nothing there for Ronk, Pennsylvania. So I'm going to have to go online and, and redo that. And so I can get my reservations for the Caboose Motel. And I'll probably go up there. So if you're still here, yes. Okay, so I'm assuming that Friday night, you're going to have a get together and at the Red Caboose Hotel, they have a dining car there as a restaurant. So I don't know how late there opens, but uh, hopefully have a get together there or out in the parking lot because uh, it's all open. It's all paved. Uh, it could raise hell out in the parking lot between the cabooses. They have a Conrail caboose for you. Yeah, yeah, they do. They have a LGB caboose. They have a Lionel caboose. I, uh, you probably have to call them up and order it uh, specifically. They have different sizes. They have some with uh, just one double bed. They don't have queen size beds. They got double beds with one double bed, two double beds, and you know, a couple of single beds, dependent on the size of the caboose and uh, also farmhouses and they, they got some rolling stock I think it, they said they had a, a um, oh, I can't remember REA Express uh, car okay Friday night get together Used to live an hour and a quarter from Strasburg and would drive there for the day and chase the train. Yeah, it's not too far from, uh, not too far from uh, where we stay with my daughter in Annapolis. Uh, in fact, every time we went up there, we just, you know, left in the morning and got there and spent all day there. So it, it's a good place to go. Oops. If there's a campground near, I uh, pro probably see if these are campgrounds near Strasburg. I'm pretty sure there's campgrounds around there. There's they're all over uh, Pennsylvania. Um, you mean like an RV park, that kind of campground, or just a regular old campground where you could pitch a tent? Okay, so that's my question to you. All right, what else did I have? Okay, I already said the village has changed. So, okay, I made some changes on my web page. Um, I would, 
I had a contact form on there where model railroaders could go in there and you know ask me questions and it would go to my email well I was getting so much spam on that contact form from bots that I just eliminated that contact form on there altogether I did that about three days ago and I haven't had one spam email since then so if you want to get a hold of me you can you know I have the link up on the header on my web page and I also have it in the description of every video that I do it's Tom strains and things at gmail.com and so I'm gonna leave it like that because uh, I hate spam I had too much spam there so uh, no more yeah I noticed that okay there are now two webcams on Strasburg where one at each end of the line yeah I was watching it the other day and I you know I just clicked on it and then saw passenger car go you know passenger train go by it just whew, whizzed by <laughs> and horseshoe curve had it you know this is old news but they had a second derailment up there so I don't know you, you probably heard that that's a two or three week old thing about the second derailment up at the horseshoe curve okay so does anybody else have any questions here yes yeah, spam is terrible I hate it you know and what what makes it bad is you know there the the regular emails that I get end up in the spam also so I got to go through all the spam and then see if somebody is on there asking a legitimate question so you know that that's the only issue with that so now you know if somebody asks a question I'll be able to see it right away a lot of a lot of times you know things would get buried in a scam in, in a scam spam and uh, wouldn't be able to see anything you know I, I it and recently I was getting so much that I had to go in and clear it every day uh, I used to just check it once a week and you know I'd find you know you know legitimate emails in there and get get it that way but uh, lately I mean I was I was getting like 20 and 30 a day so I'd have to go in there every day and check them out and delete them and and same thing you know that that's on Gmail and Gmail used to be pretty good but uh, I mean I understand that was from my contact form but uh, other than that uh, I hardly get any spam I I, uh, I, I, I get some from uh, some of the stuff that uh, legitimate email ends up in the spam sometimes so I gotta watch that Okay, I blame Sparky on both the Romans at Horseshoe Curve. <laughs> okay. It was supposed to be in a Monty Python accent. Okay, I can't do Monty Python accent, but wow, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't like spam. I love spam as long as, as bacon flavored. I can never get into spam. This Nate said spam. I thought of the food. If you can call it food, it uh, must be. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't call it food. Uh, uh, um, we got it one time uh, as hurricane food. You know, we stock up on Chef Boy RD and uh, other stuff like that for you know in case of hurricanes well a couple of years ago we actually had a hurricane come through and we had to eat that stuff so and we we got some spam we luckily we had electricity back on so we could fry it but uh, uh, I don't like spam <laughs> a, a otherwise known as fake ham I uh, think it's a lot more than just fake ham. There's a lot of other stuff in there too. 
Okay, so. All right, what do we got here? All right, I don't think nobody's asking questions on here about anything. Let's see what I got in the queue that I wanted to put up here. Okay. Now this is from a long time ago. I put this in the queue when I when I saw it. I did that idea years ago with Atlas Hat uh, book on buildings and layout and back. PF books with pictures of track. I copied them to 500, then worked on my train plan and met meat wrapping paper. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm ending up doing. I, I got that. That's going back to the beginning of the show here, but I put that in a queue so I could bring it up right now. But yeah, um, I have an old one of those six foot long tables. I think I'm just going to put the, the plywood up on top of it, put the paper on top of that, get out all my kits, and uh, hopefully somewhere on there they'll have the dimensions of those kits where I could uh, draw them out on the paper so I could draw up my own track plan. And what I wanted to do is come in. I don't want to go, you know, you, you have NMRA and uh, Fremo, but you always have, you know, for modules, you always have it going straight across on the module. I don't want to do that. I, you know, I'm not going to be doing it. I'm not going to be hooking up to anybody's other module or taking it to a uh, uh, club or anything like that. So, okay, ZD USA Rail Fan. Okay, we got a couple other people in here. Okay. I got burned out on spam due to several hurricanes. <laughs> Luckily, we only had one hurricane and we only had one can of spam. We had a lot of Chef Boyardee and we had some uh, corned beef was just really salty and stuff like that. But anyway, but... Uh, Spam is bushcrafters and hikers to go food. Yeah, that's that's right. Okay. ZD USA Rail Fan, how you doing? Glad you could make it here. We're just uh, talking a little bit about different things right now. I'm um, looking for people to say, uh, give me some questions or something else. How you doing, Tejon Dubois? I hope I said that right. Okay, Tom, could you do a review on Acolyte's Digitrack breakout boards? I'll have to get one because I don't have any uh, breakout boards for the uh, anything Digitracks. I know they, they make a lot of the stuff for the Digitracks, like for the PM42. I know they got a breakout board for that, but uh, uh, which one do are you looking for a review on? Uh, I like to solder, <laughs> if you have noticed already. So I got a PM42 with the, with the, how many, 22 uh, connectors on there. I soldered everything on there. Uh, I know they make a breakout board because I think uh, one of my viewers was asking me about that, and uh, they were confused about the power uh, terminal on there. So uh, which breakout board would you like? PM42. Okay. All right. So I'll see what I can do about that. I'll see if I can get a uh, breakout board for the PM42. I just got out of the shower. TMI. Too much information. <laughs> Yes, for signaling. Okay. All right. I'll have to see what uh, what's available and see what uh, what I can get. And you know what? Let me see here. Let me get rid of this thing here. You know, for me to do these things here. Let me see. 
I need money. So, you know, there's a little dollar bill sign down at the bottom there for Super Chat. And uh, I even have some a strobe here, that a half-ass strobe. I got to work on the other one. Oh, that uh, the thing that I showed you earlier, this thing right here. Let me just drop something. But anyway, this side, I showed you that, but this side right here is my project for the lightning with sound. And so along with the lightning with sound, I could put strobe back there also for Super Chat. So that would be a nice thing. It says, help support our efforts to provide you with quality videos and streams through Super Chat, Patreon. I talked about Patreon earlier and PayPal me. So I'd appreciate it. Okay, what else? That's funny. Yeah, too much information. Okay, Tom, I'm looking for a track for ZN2, sectional trackage. Have looked everywhere scarce as hen's teeth. I'll have to do a search on that. Uh, that's pretty small. Um, you don't find anything. Have you been able to find anything anywhere on that? Okay, how many live videos do you make? Okay, uh, right now I'm doing them every other Monday. Uh, I started off, you know, just giving you an introduction of what I was going to be doing, and I did them like uh, three or four weeks in a row. But uh, it's going to be every other Monday uh, at 8 p.m., and that's going to be it. Oh, another thing I wanted to ask you. Is anybody here ever heard of Ninja before last week or heard of them since last week? Uh, if you have on either one of them, just put a one in the chat. Because uh, apparently I never heard of them before. He's got 22 million subscribers on YouTube and like 15 million on, uh, what is it, Twitch. And he just moved all his live streams from Twitch over to Mixer, which is pretty good because I've been looking into Mixer. In fact, I've been on Mixer playing around with it since April. And so has anybody ever heard of him? Uh, he was a YouTube. He's a YouTuber and he's Twitch. He does live streams, gamer, uh, all the time. He's been on Mixer for um, I don't think quite a week yet, and he's got the last I checked almost four million views so far in a week. Can you imagine that? But anyway. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Let's see if this thing works. It's a little bit lame. Thank you. I really appreciate it. $5 super chat. There's there's my lame strobe right now. I'm, I'm getting to uh, do a better one for the super chat. I just have to get the circuit board going. I got it right here. I'm working on two projects on that one right there, the uh, the lightning and the super chat. So that'll work on both of them. So thank you very much. Oops. There we go. Back to normal. Woohoo! Tom, I got 14 subscribers on channel. Congratulations. All right. Tom, so how does the super chat work? Because I need help setting up my Digitrack signaling with the JMRI. Let me see if I can get uh, 
this thing up here. Uh, I'll get my laptop over here. Okay, get this off of here. See this little dollar bill right there? On the, the cursor doesn't show up on it. But right down on the bottom, you see that little uh, dollar bill there. All you got to do is click on that. Super Chat, send highlighted message. So uh, you could click on that and that will, you could write a message and send money with that. And I think you, uh, you have to set up an account with that first. Um, I guess you got to give them your credit card information or bank information on that. But uh, let me get out of that right there. But that's how you do it. If, if you have that right down there, that's all you have to do is click on it. And if you, and uh, first time you do it, all you have to do is uh, give them the information, go through Google and uh, set up a, uh, an account with your bank or whatever credit card. And then from then on, whenever you hit it, it'll just, uh, uh, you know, uh, do your credit card. Cool strobe. I had one outside all last night. <laughs> I got I got to get a better one than that because that's that one's pretty lame. And I got I got some good LEDs that I could do it with. Uh, I bought I bought them uh, RGB LED light strips. Uh, they have a number on them. It's got four terminals on it where you could do a lot of stuff on there. So. Uh, You know, depending on how much this, this uh, thing that I have right here, I think I burned it out already because I can't get green on it. So the green doesn't work on it. It's got a little remote right here where I could change the colors. But it, it, this one was a cheap or really inexpensive one. But uh, I have some better ones that I'll probably put up there and put in the back when I light all my buildings back here too. Uh, okay. All right, Sparky says, have a good night, everyone. Chat later. See you all in May. All right. Have a safe trip. Uh, it's a long way over the, over the pond. Okay. Thanks. Okay, I hope you got it. Thank you. I just entered my credit card information. I, yeah, I did a long time ago, so I, I, I think that's how it works. Okay. Who did I miss here? Okay. All right. I missed you coming in. How you doing, Rodney? Good to see you here. Haven't seen you in a long time. Like me. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, Aloha Milton, for stopping by. You're cleaning off the 3D resin prints. Okay. All right. Okay. Sparky's getting ready. He's already saying cheers. <laughs> okay. Have a safe flight and good time, Sparky. And Hot Rod Rondy says... Miss you, Sparky. All right. CDP1965, how you doing? Glad you could make it again. We're just uh, chatting a little bit, wasting time here. I've been on about... Um, now, almost an hour and a half now. Yeah, it says an hour and 32 minutes here. Had a glitch here every once in a while. Okay, train room Gary made it here too. How's that anchor in the, uh, in the uh, Great Lakes doing, huh? <laughs> G 
Good to be in here, Tom. Okay, thanks for coming by. G'day, lads. Black Mountain Station. Okay, how you doing? All right. Now, what was I talking about there? Okay. Mm, my train of thought has left the station. I can't remember what I was. Oh, yeah. Since uh, Xfinity has limited my data to one terabyte, and these streams take up a lot of terabytes, uh, I went way over, way, way over in July, but uh, they uh, have two forgiving months where they don't charge you. But after that, they charge you, uh, what is it, $10 for every uh, 50 gigabytes? So 50 gigabytes streaming isn't a lot. So I'm going to have to go after this. I have one. I have this month here, August, where I could go over without being charged. But in September, I'm going to have to bite the bullet and pay the extra $50 to get the unlimited that I was supposed to get to begin with. So I could do unlimited. Yeah, my, my train of thought derailed. It, uh, my train of thought always derails. Okay. So, I was going to say something and I forgot about it. So, there we go again. That's, that's my train of thought. Okay. But anyway, we, we're at an hour and a half. And what I was thinking of doing is just going... Yeah, I, okay, okay. I'm checking the chat while I'm talking. Did you hear there were two derailments at Herschel Curve? Yeah, I, I think right before you came on, I said, I, yeah, that's what I said. There was a second one about, what, two two or three weeks ago? Uh, yeah, I got to get re-railed. <laughs> it's kind of hard to do. <laughs> But anyway, what I was thinking about doing it was just, you know, just going over the limit as much as I can uh, while I'm getting the free extra data uh, this month. So I don't know. What do you think? I guess I guess uh, nobody ever heard a ninja because <laughs> nobody uh, responded to that thing over there. So or it has. Has anybody heard of uh, Mixer? Uh, it's a it's a li it's live streaming only, and it's by Microsoft. Microsoft has it, and it is now on YouTube and Facebook. When you stream, you're streaming maybe about uh, thirty seconds behind, because I I can look at the chat on here and I can look at the restream or not the restream, but uh, the this what's you're actually seeing you're actually seeing about 20 seconds 20 to 25 seconds after i do it or actually i say it well on mixer it is faster than light that's what they have ftl so as when i say something you actually see it on the screen and whenever you type something in in the chat as soon as you type it, as soon as you hit enter, I see it. It's that fast. I don't know how they do it, but they do it. But I guess there's a lot of people going over to Mixer. I've been looking into it for since April. I've been on there since April, uh, not doing any live streams, but I've been watching other people doing streamers. And it's not just gamers. They got a lot of they got a lot of people on there that do a lot of weird stuff on. They got one one channel on there that just shows their aquarium 24-7 all day long. Their aquarium. And they got so many followers. They got <laughs> I guess there's a lot of people that, that put that on and use that as a uh, as a uh, uh, screensaver on their television or on their computer because the last time I was on there, they had like uh, 
80 people watching and watching an aquarium <laughs> so I guess that's what they're doing all right we got another super chat here thank you very much now I got to get a bot so I could bring up those super chats and here we go to bring them up automatically thank you very much Tejon Dubois I really appreciate it so let me get this lame strobe going <laughs> thank you very much that'll help out all right I appreciate it this super chat get that super chat going because it helps out every little bit helps okay all right so James Carroll yes I've heard of mixer yeah it's uh, it's pretty good it's fast it's got a nice uh, user interface uh, it's it's more towards uh, streaming for gamers but there's a lot of potential there and I'm thinking about doing a stream or two there to see how it how it works uh, I've watched a lot of other people streaming on there there's a lot of people on there and it's you know you can do it in uh, uh, different categories you know they they have a categorized by games uh, if it's a web show if it's uh, <laughs> I gotta see this here The aquarium keeps the kitty cats entertained during the time when owner is away. There is a, a channel on there that has cats on it too. I, I, I guess it's a, a, a shelter or something like that. And they have, they have multiple cameras so they'll switch off. They'll you know, put five minutes on, on one camera, five minutes on the other camera. You know, they'll have a bunch of cats on a, on, on a big mat with their toys on there and then over on the floor and someplace else. I guess people watch that stuff. How much does YouTube take? Um, I think they take 30%, 30 or 35%. I'm not sure. Somewhere around there, I have to I have to check because that's when they, that's uh, what it was when they first started it. I don't know if they in, uh, you know increased their take out of it, but uh, thank you very much for the super chats. I really appreciate it. Sounds like a plan for the cats instead of Terry <laughs> support. Yeah, <laughs> I mean they're actually the one. There's actually three that I found where they have aquarium. Now, one's Russian, and I don't know what the other one was, but they were too dark. You can't really see them, but uh, the one, um, it's, <laughs> it's something else. Let me see if I could pull it up on this computer here. Uh, i got to get this keyboard down here and let you see what it looks like. Okay. I have to. Okay. Now that's uh, that's Ninja right there playing. Uh, but what they do is they. Uh, uh, where's my cursor? Okay, here we go. Okay, I got to sign in. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me sign in. And I'll be right back with that right there. Oh, it doesn't have the automatic thing. You can see how slow I uh, type. <laughs> I'm not a fast typer. Uh, 
Okay, keep me signed in, yeah. All right. Now let's see. Okay, there, there that's a ninja right there, 28 years old, and I think what everybody was saying is um, he got a six-year, $900 million contract there. So this is the aquarium. Now, as you can see right here, right now, there's 64 people watching. And they have 983 followers. They got 143,000 views. That's nuts. That's just nuts. My goodness. But that that's what Mixer looks like. Let me pull something else up here. Uh, nobody else is online that I follow. Maybe I can get a re, uh, restream of something on here. Okay. Now this isn't live, it's just a replay. Come on. Let me get it up there. Okay, here we go. But does anybody know who this is? This is Dave Foster and Loria uh, Pertucci. Uh, they've been on uh, YouTube, they've been on Facebook, they've been on Twitch for a long time. But okay, there you go. It's kind of messed up right now. The replays don't work that well, but anyway. That's what Mixer looks like, and it's for streaming. Uh, a lot of people are on there. And uh, let me pull up this chat again to see if I can see what's going on here. Okay. Yes, I saw that. that uh, <laughs> it's amazing. Probably like Earth Cam channels. Um, there, it, it's it's Microsoft's version of Twitch. Uh, Twitch is for gamers. They they live stream their games all the time on Twitch, and. A lot of people are going from Twitch over to Mixer because it's a lot faster and it's a lot more, it's more user friendly. Okay, 34A had 11 cars that fell and 35A derailed five or six. Okay, so. <laughs> Dave Piper says, those people that watch the aquarium probably think we are nuts for watching rail cams. You're probably right. <laughs> I watched the rail cam and hey, I, I watched the cam I watched the aquarium too. Uh, and you know, I had it on. It's soothing. And you know, they <laughs> they didn't have you know when they had the, the, the bubbles on her. But they had some other sound on it that sounded like crickets, so they didn't have the sound didn't go with the aquarium. So you normally when you have the aquarium with the bubbles, you could hear the bubbles. They didn't have that on. They had something else. Yeah, the cat channels are cat. Re yeah, that they they have cat. Yeah, they are the cat rescue places. Yeah, because they talked about that they uh, rescued about. Uh, 500 cats so far this year. Some people just bored to tears and watch whatever they can. They just haven't found model railroading. That's right. They got to get into model railroading. Uh, yeah, that, I guess there's a lot of people out there that are bored. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, that would that would put you to sleep. That would put me to sleep. Yeah, I, I should put that on the TV in the bedroom because I always have problems sleeping. I have a problem falling asleep all the time. So uh, put it on the TV and maybe that that'll uh, help it, better than uh, I told I told my doctor that I needed something to go to sleep, so he prescribed me some medicine. Can't remember what it was. This was about a month ago, but I went to the drugstore. And they said it was going to be like 300 some dollars for a 30 day supply. And I said, Are you kidding me? So I said, what else would <laughs> what else would work? And he gave me a couple of different things that would work on there. But uh, anyway, that's about it. I know Debbie's over there. Uh, she's moderating it and probably fallen asleep over there listening to us okay here we go I got a question what is the best budget DCC system for beginners have you heard of DCC plus plus no, I'm not. oh yeah <laughs> she just yelled over she said no I'm not sleeping <laughs> Yeah, NCE Power Cab. You know, unfortunately, there's a lot that's uh, uh, pretty expensive. But if if you're not afraid of electronics and you're not afraid of getting on a computer and doing just a little bit of programming, you don't have to do much. It's already made up for you. Uh, you can go to DCC++. And let me see if I can pull it up here. Where's my channel? Okay. And I have a lot of videos on that. You can check out the, the playlist. Okay. Oh, I'm looking in the wrong place here. Okay. Playlists. Let me pull this screen up here. All right, I pulled this up the other day when somebody was asking about DCC, but this is it right here. I'll grab the, uh, the link. Oh, I got to get the other keyboard, and I'll put this link down in the chat. Okay, put that. Boom. Boom. Okay. So it's in the chat now. That is the link for the playlist on DCC++. Um, it's very inexpensive. Uh, you build your own thing. Uh, you get the components on Amazon or anywhere else. You can get them on eBay. You can get the generic ones on eBay. And uh, it's really cool. Uh, you can even use a Raspberry Pi with it. So you use Arduino, a motor shield. Uh, you need a little power supply, something like this. Maybe a five, five. <clears throat> if you can get one like 18 volts or something like that and five amps, you hook that in on the motor shield and you got DCC++ right there. It works just like DCC. And you're good to go, and it, you could, all in all, you could, you know, for generic stuff, fifty bucks. That's about it. That's all you have to spend. Okay. No comments from the peanut gallery. <laughs> Rodney says I watch anything interesting. I don't know how interesting aquarium would be. What about throttles for DCC++? Your cell phone, your tablet. And you could also use the JMRI throttle. Um, the engine driver app for, um, not, not the Apple stuff, but the uh, Android uh, cell phones. Um, there's a guy on YouTube, I think I mentioned him uh, a couple of streams back. Um, 
I can't remember his name. But if you check back and you'll see in those videos there that uh, the guy that does the engine driver, you can make. Okay. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Here's an Arduino Uno with a motor shield. Right there. Those two little things. That creates the DCC signal. Right there. And you got two terminals for your program track, two terminals for your main, and two terminals right here for your power supply. And basically the only thing that you have to do is there's a trace on the bottom of here. You have to cut that trace on here so the power from here does not go back on to your microcontroller. That's about the only work that you have to do. And you put two jumpers over here. It's all in the video. Now, if you have a Raspberry Pi, and this is the one without the Wi-Fi, but uh, where's my other one? Oh, that's not the other Pi. I'll be right back there in a second. All right. I was playing around with the camera for the Raspberry Pi. I got that hooked up to this one here. But Raspberry Pi, about $32 for one of these and maybe $5 for a case for it. But anyway, this is a mini computer. As you can see, it's got four USB ports on there. It's got the Ethernet connector on there. It's got HDMI and then your power connector. It's got the mini USB. I think that's the, that's not the C, I think that's the B mini USB. But they just came out with uh, the, the Raspberry Pi 4, oh, about a month ago, and I think the first day that it came out, they were sold out. I don't know if you, uh, any of the distributors have them in yet, but you could hook this up, and with that engine driver, the guy that I was uh, talking about before, um, he wrote a program for the Pi that all you have to do is download it onto the Pi. And whenever you hook up your Pi to, to this, and it would automatically detect whatever internet is available. And the thing about the Raspberry Pi, it can transmit its own Wi-Fi signal. So you don't even need a router or anything like that. Everything comes from the, let me get this camera out of the way. Everything comes from the, the Raspberry Pi. So you could use, uh, I can't remember what the program is, uh, on that playlist that I just mentioned, everything's in there. Uh, you know, my train of thought, my memory isn't that well. I have to read up on everything again to remind myself of what I did back then. But anyway, the engine driver, the guy that wrote the engine driver who or who is taking care of the engine driver now has all the instructions on there of how to do it. And all you do whenever you plug it in, boom, it creates the Wi-Fi signal and boom. And you could even you could even put JMRI on here. And you could use your tablet as a screen. And then you do your commands from there. So it's really cool uh, if you like little gadgets like that. So okay now. 11 year old knows about Ninja. Um, I seen some older ones because um, I watched them for a little while over the weekend and he was at Lollapalooza. And there's 20 and 30 year olds there. 
I mean, he was up on his balcony playing games, and they're all cheering him on. I mean, he had a big crowd there cheering him on about <laughs> everything. So, yeah, 11-year-olds would know about him, but, you know, the, he has a following that is older than that, too. Okay. Let me see. Yeah, Dave Bodner, he, ha he has... Um, he created the throttle also that goes with the uh, DCC++ and you can see it on there. And I think I, a couple of streams ago, I talked about that on there and I gave you uh, the link to that on uh, his uh, website. His is uh, Train, Train Electronics is the website. Okay, good night, Dave. How long ago was that? It was about five minutes ago. Uh, okay. Tom, you should make your videos at Bound Brook, New Jersey and Allentown, PA. I have I have a video of Horseshoe Curve and I have the uh, Railroad uh, Museum in Altoona. And I even did some rail fanning a couple of blocks up from the museum. I have to put those out yet. I already did, I already uh, published the uh, horseshoe curve, but not the museum. I got to do that yet. Yeah, Dave Bonner has a video on DOI throttle for DCC++. And um, in one of those, one of the Q&As, somebody said that they built more stuff onto their throttle and uh, you'd have to go back and check the, those videos for that but uh, they followed the instructions from his throttle and added to it put more features onto it so it, that's in one of my videos it's in the comments of one of those videos on the dcc plus plus it might be on the, one of the dcc plus uh, plus um, q and a's I'm all DC, don't need DCC, too expensive. Yeah, the, the, the uh, decoders is what gets you also because uh, they run up in price. And I hear Debbie roaming around. She, <laughs> she's, she's saying, you're on too long. <laughs> okay. I'm happy with my power cab. I'm I'm glad you are. Uh, usually, uh, who wherever you start out at, uh, uh, modelers you tend to stay there. I started out with Digitrax. Um, I you know I read up on it beforehand, and uh, it to me that had the most features of anything else, and it was at the time uh, pretty inexpensive. Uh, that I wouldn't have to buy anything else relatively soon. Now, everything I have, you can see I, I have a DS64 here, and I got a couple of more over here with the PR3. But since, that's another thing, with, with the DCC++, I mean, with the PR3 on JMRI trying to... Uh, uh, program a locomotive or do anything with with the uh, decoder I mean it just takes so long with this you could the commands just go I can't snap my fingers anymore because of arthritis but just do 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 it, it goes through the commands super fast okay We are converting to DCC with our new layout. The The module that I'm uh, working on right now for Model Railroaders for Beginners is all going to be all DCC++. In fact, this is what I'm going to be using on it. This is a, a Mega. It gives you some extra inputs and outputs and a Palulu which gives you three volt or three amps on each uh, signal 
where this one is two amps on each channel here. Uh, three amps, but with a maximum of five amps, it'll take up to five amps on there. Okay. Taking a lot of inspiration from Tom. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad I could help. I'm a gadget fan, but only to a certain point. Uh, me too. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I, I, you know, I could do this stuff, and I, you know, I try to teach it as best I can, but I'm limited in what I know about it, and uh, a lot of times I'll have to read up on something before I could. Uh, do anything on it. Um, I've had I've, I've been working with Arduino for maybe five years now. In fact, the one Arduino that I have is is one. Of, oh, well, I'm not going to go get it, but it's probably one of the original ones by Make, and, and it's got the SMD chip on it instead of a regular chip. Okay. James, I'm glad you stopped by. Uh, two weeks from now, August 19th will be the next uh, next stream. We're going to do it every other weekend. Okay, so glad you stopped by. Glad you could spend some time. You can get a good quality decoder for 15 to 20 bucks. Uh, yeah, some somebody was telling me that uh, there are is a Chinese site. Uh, I think they got them on eBay that were very inexpensive, but uh, like everything else on eBay, um, it comes on a slow boat from China. Just like, uh, I, you know, I talked about these uh, about a month ago. I ordered some from uh, Newegg, but they're being shipped from China. so. They said it would be around the, around the beginning of August. I uh, still haven't seen them yet, so. Okay. Okay. How much does ECC power cost? They cost lots of money. Uh, Digitrax, yes, they cost a lot of money. Uh, the newer ones, I'm not exactly sure how much. Let me pull this up right here to see what we got. All right. Okay, here is the entry level. Zephyr Express two hundred and thirty five dollars right there. So oh, bring that products. Uh, throttles, wireless, sun function, lock, power management, transponding, computer control, accessory. Oh, pff, right at the top. <laughs> okay, that's my uh train of thought leaving the station okay so this is the this one right here is the entry level one 235 dollars this can be used uh, as a DCC throttle it can also you can also hook up I'm not well you used to be able to on the older ones I'm not sure about the the newer ones this is the DCS 52 I know on the 50 and the 51 you could hook up your DC power pack on the back of it as as an additional throttle okay now advanced command station auto reversing DCC booster Booster. Okay, these are the individual ones. Starter sets. Okay. 5 amp, 8 amp starter sets. So you get the the, the uh, command station, you get the power supply, you get uh, the uh, whatever, 91, 
uh, and the throttle, uh, yeah, throttle. Four hundred fifty dollars, right there. Uh, then that's probably the cheapest one. Uh, let me see. Let's see where we can go after that. Five and duplex starter set. And this is a duplex. This got what else? That one's six hundred and sixty dollars. So that's quite expensive. So, and if you like playing around with gadgets, that, and if you had a Raspberry Pi, and if you have a uh, tablet that you could use as a monitor, um, 30 some bucks for this. For these two right here, if you get the good ones, the Arduino Uno and the Arduino uh, Motor Shield, the Uno will cost you about uh, $21, and I think the Motor Shield maybe 29 now not quite sure but something close to that but uh, yeah the, the, I mean you can get away a lot cheaper that way but if you want to go with uh, um, if you want to go with a real DCC stuff the commercially available DCC stuff then uh, you're gonna pay a lot of money okay Okay, I use Digitrax myself. My career has been electronics and automation all the way. I've been in automation for 40 years in laundries, uh, if that counts. Okay, Digitrax for the win. Throw DigiKey looks enticing. Uh, you know, I'm always going to say something good about Digitrax. Um, I wanted to stop down there on the way for back from Alabama, but uh, it wasn't a good time, though. We went uh, within about 20 miles of their facility. Okay. The power cab runs about 150 and includes everything to get started. That's, uh, that's pretty uh, inexpensive. That's a good good way to start because uh, what the, the Digitrack Zephyr was uh, $235. Okay, I use Digitrax myself. My, oh, okay, I already did that one. Okay, let me go on. Sound gets annoying after a few minutes of operation. I I turn my sound down a lot so it doesn't <laughs> doesn't get annoying. The the factory setting on that is it kind of loud, so you go in and change the CVs on there. Lays DCC. That's that's what I yeah that that's what I've heard. Uh, that's the the Chinese version of the decoders. And buy direct from AliExpress. Okay, yeah, that's what I heard about the the very inexpensive decoders. TCS for mobile decoders. All right, around ten bucks for basic DCC chip. That's that's pretty good. And <laughs> now getting off this. Uh, getting off the subject, Doctor, uh, uh, what's his name? Oh, lost my train of thought again. Uh, okay, it it'll come to me. Um, but he he does uh, regular articles on model railroaders, um, and I forgot that one too. <laughs> the the online magazine. Uh, Jeff Bunza, yeah, Jeff Bunza, Doctor Jeff Bunza. Check out all his articles. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel, and he's got all the articles on Model Railroad Model Railroad Hobbyist magazine. It's uh, the online magazine. 
He builds his own decoders, DCC decoders, uh, with 17 functions on it. And uh, he's got the plans on it. He gives you the link to all the parts for it. And he even has the circuit boards for it. So you go check him out, Jeff Bunza. Let me see if I can bring up his uh, thing here. Uh, getting a lot of things open up on here. G-E-O-F-F. -F. Jeff Bunza. Okay. All right. Now he he's on his thirty second project on here. Uh, he's got Wi Fi throttle, raw power for DCC plus plus, turn out channels, direct JMRI to Arduino communications. Uh, in some of the earlier ones, he has. Let me go back a little bit. He has the DCC decoder, DCC control. I mean, this goes back a couple of years. Here, update to the 17 pin configurable multifunction decoder, accessory decoder version added. So he's got a lot of stuff on there. I mean, these are accessory decoders now. I think he had. Uh, I don't know, you'd have to put them in pretty big uh, locomotives. Maybe these are just accessory decoders on here with the 17 functions. So, you have to check out, read into it a little bit more. It's been a while since I uh, read all those on there. I was thinking about doing it. He's got the uh, circuit boards. Uh, all figured out also so you can uh, purchase the circuit boards through him yeah you have to watch how many functions you get for ten dollars you always got to find make sure that uh, you get that new egg has train stuff I'm not sure I just bought some stuff from new egg uh, Amazon has train stuff. Let me check on Newegg. We'll see. Fisher Price, my first Thomas and Friends. <laughs> I think that's about it. Yeah, that's all I see on there. Oh, wait a minute. Ice cream stand. HO scale train building. Well, you know when they call it a train building, you you know that the whoever's writing that doesn't know a lot about it. Air pressure switch for a compressor trumpet. Okay. Apparently, if they do have stuff, not very much. But I know you can get uh, the stuff on on Amazon. Uh, New Egg's been around for a long time, a lot longer than uh, Amazon. Tom. Four hundred fifty bucks. Uh, what was that? I will be reviewing my Zephyr soon. If anyone wants a newbie's experience, including JMRI link up, following Tom's great tutorials. All right. Did you? You? you I, I guess you saw the uh, the uh, tutorial that I did on the Zephyr that I bought for. Uh, at the train show that uh, was all burnt up. <laughs> I mean, it was really messed up. I, somebody tried to, I, I, I guess they burned something up. You tried to use the 
DC throttle on it and used it incorrectly and burned up and it burned some of the traces on the circuit board also. So when I I didn't I didn't really look at it. I I already started into the the uh, the tutorial. You know, I was filming it. Uh, and you know I was got halfway through it and things didn't work so I had to take apart the the Zephyr and I, I found that out and I tried to I tried to fix it but I wasn't too successful on that I seen the best way is to buy DCC on board locomotives that way if you are DC you can go to DCC easy that's what that's what I do um, I had a couple of old DC locomotives that I bought the decoders for and put them in there but uh, most of the uh, most of the locomotives that I get are already have the decoders in them okay agreed oh my goodness we're over two hours okay well since uh, Comcast is uh, letting me slide on this one terabyte per month uh, for this month at least uh, let's take advantage of it I work marine computer control systems. All right. Uh, when I was in the Air Force, I worked on uh, avionics uh, systems. Uh, that's where I got my electronics uh, training. Uh, they gave us all this training on, on there, and all we did was replace black boxes in the aircraft. We didn't really get to, to do anything except we, we were able to um, uh, repair some of the instruments in shop uh, we only had the facilities to do about four of the instruments and everything else we had to put a nurse tag on it and send it out someplace else not repairable this station so that that's where my electronics started and uh, um, I tried to keep up with it but uh, everything that I did since then was in a laundry uh, on uh, and it, that was pretty cool in automation where, where I learned a lot about uh, automation was uh, when I worked for a uh, printing company they did Christmas gift wrap and they had some really high speed equipment there to go <laughs> throw out stuff and I learned a lot about equipment and electronics there also my dad and I go to trains and lanes hobbies for my train table downstairs in my basement good deal uh, where is that? Anyway, uh, if if you said earlier, I I didn't get it. Or okay, I used to work at trains and lanes. So you're up in Pennsylvania. All right, it was a DCC install guide. All right. Chazco, I haven't seen you all night. Yeah, model railroad hobbyist. You know, every once in a while, you know, they, they got so many different names. It just doesn't hit me right away. Okay. I model and scale, so making my decoders is too <laughs> much work for me. <laughs> I, I suppose so. <laughs> I, I, w I wouldn't even know what to do with N scale. It's so small, I'd have to get out my goggles. I'd be... Wait for it. I'd be walking around like this all day. Just to... See what I was doing. All right. Where are we at here? I got my Arduino from your Amazon channel. Thank you very much for buying on my Amazon. I really appreciate it. I get a little, little cut out of that. So thank you very much. All right. And saw that one. I have built many computers from parts off Newegg over the years. Um, I thought about it. 
but it was a lot easier for me to go to Dell and, and buy it from Dell. <laughs> All right. Good night, Tom. All right. Thanks for stopping by. I just retired from supporting software. Congratulations on your retirement. I seen the thing. Was it on Facebook where you had... Uh, your last day at the, at the office with the two monitors there. Congratulations on your retirement. You're going to love it. So you just don't go too slow. First week, you're not going to know what to do. I mean, you're, you're, you're still going to be in the work mood, mode. And uh, uh, it's going to be hard to slow down. <laughs> If, if there's a, a way to slow down. <laughs> but anyway, congratulations, Chuck. Um, are you going to the show in, at the Villages? Uh, when was it? The 17th and 18th this month. Uh, I'll be up there on Saturday. Uh, you're quite welcome. Okay, so we're working on over two hours right now. So what we're going to do here is... We got to wrap this thing up because it's getting a little bit late. I know Debbie went downstairs a little while ago. I guess she went down to get something to eat because uh, we haven't eaten dinner yet. Uh, we normally eat about 7, but when I, whenever I do a live stream, I don't eat before the live stream. But, uh, okay. So, we got to wrap this thing up. Village is not sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're going to be up there. I don't think you can ever get away from supporting computers. I don't know. That's what I thought about in a laundry when I, you know, when I worked at the laundry. Okay. I, uh, when I worked at the laundry, I thought I was going to work until I was uh, 70 years old until I got hurt. And then I couldn't do it anymore. So I had to retire early. I retired uh, when I was uh, uh, 62. And uh, I would never go back. <laughs> do you have an eBay store? No, I do not. I don't sell anything on eBay. I try to stay away from eBay as much as I can. Uh, a previous wife that I had sold on eBay when it was first starting out. I think it was first starting out around 2002 or something like that. And... Uh, she got in a lot of trouble there. I won't go into that. She's no longer my wife either. <laughs> yes, it's late and I got to work on the layout. Good show. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, yeah, it's time to time to say good night. It's about almost 20 after 10 now. So Xfinity, I'm going to crank it up tonight and maybe again on August 19th that's the next show uh, in two weeks we'll crank it up and uh, keep it going for as long as we can and uh, use up all that data on Xfinity before I have to start paying for it the next month so keep those cards and letters coming those emails uh, the super chat where's that super chat thank you for the two that uh, donated on the super chat tonight uh i really appreciate it it's going to help out if you also would like to go on patreon um you could donate there and paypal me so don't forget to check out my amazon store there's the little qr code right there and android now has it on their camera you used to have to have an app for the QR code, but uh, now you can do it directly from your camera. So, right there. 
there's the Amazon QR code and let me see I got a PayPal me uh, right there there's the PayPal QR code also and you can just bring your camera up there and and get that and that'll take you right to my PayPal me account and you could also and if I don't leave it up there long enough um, you can check the replay oops wrong one okay all right bye everyone Wilbur tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Rodney says I'm gonna leave this on for a little bit so everybody could say their good nights and everything else uh, and we'll see you in two weeks that's going to be August 19th at 8 p.m. and maybe in between there I might try out mixer for a little bit so until the next time let me get rid of this first until the next time we'll see you It's not that you're too